Welcome to episode 87 on the Live Blissed Out podcast. Did you know that changing your thinking patterns and thoughts towards a project, outcome, or goal is the key deciding factor on whether or not you will accomplish it? Hello, action taker. Welcome to Live Blissed Out, a podcast where I have inspirational and informational conversations with business owners and subject matter experts to help you get the scoop on a variety of topics. Tired of hesitating or making decisions without having the big picture? Want to be in the know? Then this is the place to go. I'm your host, Marissa Houston, helping you achieve bliss through awareness and action. So let's get to it. Joining us is Kaylee Shadwinkle, founder of Kaylee Shadwinkle Dance and Choreography and Pods Dance Company, also known as Put On Your Dancing Shoes. She's a successful multi-branch dance entrepreneur and award-winning travel choreographer with over 24 years of dance training and 12 years of choreography experience. In less than five years of establishing her business, She has choreographed over 275 dances and 25 musicals across the Midwest. During the height of COVID, Kaylee connected more than 23,000 individuals of all ages and dance backgrounds in 17 states in the U.S. and 44 countries worldwide to put on their dancing shoes in her weekly online community dance classes. She is proud and humbled to work with individuals of all ages, dance backgrounds, and skill levels to enjoy the wonderful art of dance. Her enthusiasm for life and dance radiate through her work, and she is excited to share some of her secrets to success on how you can maximize your talents and potential to take charge of your life and health to live the life you have always imagined. To learn more, visit podsdancecompany.com. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. Kaylee, welcome to the show. Marissa, thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here to talk to dancers about how can they just take charge of their health and wellness and using dance to do that. Dance is not something that I know a lot about. I like watching it. I definitely am impressed when I see people out there doing different dances and all kinds of dances, whether it's break dancing versus ballet versus ballroom dances. You know, there's so many different types of dancing that happens and everything is so fascinating. Why do you feel dance is so important to us and how can it help us? This sounds very off topic for what we're talking about. But in our day-to-day conversation, how much of it in a percentage do you feel is done verbally with our words? So again, do you think it's 20%, 70%, or et cetera? Mentally think that in your mind. Well, fun fact, I have heard that actually only 3% of our communication is done with our words. 97% of it is done non-verbally. So with eye contact, your body posture, how you're standing, how you're looking at someone, eyebrow raises, shoulder shrugs, if your arms are tight or you're open, all of that is communicating a message. And the cool part is, is that I love telling that I'm a traveling professional musical theater choreographer. And I love sharing that anytime I get the opportunity with my dancers to tell them that you are sharing a message and addressing someone through that movement. And the cool part is, is that through dance, we get to communicate our emotions, thoughts, expressions, call to actions. And I guess that's the bigger spectrum for musical theater. And I love being able to use dance to be able to embody and help individuals be able just to live a healthier life. And like through musical theater, communicate the stories and the storytelling or just be able to help our dancers be able to embrace who they are and just live the life they want to live and just be so joyous with it. And I just love using dance as that vessel to do that. I'm visualizing as you're explaining that. And it reminds me so much of when you watch any of these dance shows, or even if you go to a live event, many times all you hear is classical music in the background and they're doing a dance routine and you get what they're saying without a word being spoken. Oh, absolutely. It's amazing. Marissa, I love doing exercises with my dancers. I will ask my babies who are two or three years old, all the way up to my adult learners who are 50 plus years old. And I ask them, show me without saying a word with your physical body sadness. Now show me victorious. 
show me disgust, show me anger. And it's amazing without saying a word how we can use or expand our body to show emotion and evoke that. And just like we said, communicating with someone without saying a single word. You know what's so cool about this, Kaylee? It's universal. You don't have to speak a language. You can do it anywhere and people will understand you no matter where you are. It's incredible how we're capable of doing that. That's the one thing I love about dance, Marissa, is just how universal the dance are because dance is around the globe. You can go anywhere in the world and take a ballet class. It's the same technique and terminology. It might be taught differently, but if you do hip hop, jazz, ballroom, All of those foundational movements are universal. And the cool part is that same emotion and communication that we evoke, we can communicate through dance. And I just love that universal aspect of it. As a kid, I remember one of my favorite movies that I watched was Annie. I don't know if you yes. watched like the original one. I love one. Annie. Oh my Let's goodness. Go to the movies. I've choreographed that multiple times. Oh, Hard not for life. I love it. And they would just break into song and dance and do all these routines and Every time I watch it, I still love it to this day. And they are able to express themselves through all those movements and all the different scenes that they did. And those kids were amazing and so talented. And I think all of us are attracted to these musical shows for that very reason, because all of a sudden people break into dance. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Like the big shows right now, Hamilton is huge, Hadestown, Frozen, all of those. It's just so amazing just to see the storytelling. And that's one thing I love about art is that as dancers and as artists, compared to like speakers or et cetera, we sometimes can use our voice, but sometimes, like I said, we have to use other elements to do that. And I know as an artist personally, the storytelling of evoking those motions or making people think bigger and better and more and outside the box so that when you get done watching a performance, It makes you think when you left that theater or right now we have to do things virtual and et cetera. We have to be creative. You leave that performance thinking about something or you have been changed by it positively or has evoked you to think about something to maybe take action on or think differently upon and being able to express ourselves and express things that are going on or topics. And it's really awesome to do. And we've done that through pods, actually, through our dancers, really just challenging them to live the life they want to live through dance and using dance as the vessel. Every generation has their classic dance movie that they think about Greece, for example. Growing up, I remember thinking, there's never going to be a musical dance movie anymore. It's not going to happen. And then La La Land all of a sudden came out and that was such a hit. You know, it was so surprising. Absolutely. Like I grew up watching Fred Astaire and all of these amazing artists, Gene Kelly. So like Singing in the Rain, King and I, Seven Brides with Seven Brothers, Oklahoma. My favorite is White Christmas. And I was just memorized by the artistry and the dance. And you can ask my mother, You can imagine this, us listeners, we had a brick cement fireplace that's still there to this day, this glass coffee table, a fan above me, and couches and everything surrounded around me. It's probably less than four by six feet. And I was doing leaps, jumps, and turns, watching these amazing, renowned, timeless musicals, Wizard of Oz as well. I'm throwing that one out there too. I'm actually doing that show right now, and I love it. I still remember my mom was like, she's going to break or kick something or et cetera. (laughs) I kind of tried to self-teach by watching these just amazing performers and kind of my role models in dance and musical theater, because that's just the most iconic decade and what really became musical theater because of it and set the foundation for shows like Hadestown and Hamilton, Legally, Blonde, Mean Girls, all of these ones for what we know for dance and musical theater. And it's just amazing seeing how the dance and musical theater industry has just grown to what it is. And COVID, unfortunately, has definitely given some setbacks to the arts, even though right now we might not like it. I feel it's actually growing the industries and revolutionizing them in a positive way, even though there's a lot of been negatives to it. Because of those stories growing up, it's helped me realize, especially with our online learning right now, that you truly can dance anywhere and maximize your space. Even if you have a four by foot space, like I had growing up with all of those hazardous obstacles, I think till I got into adulthood, that was the only time I accidentally like kicked the coffee table. But other than that, I think it taught me being spatially aware of my surroundings, which has helped me now with online learning, 
challenge and encourage my dancers dancing at home that you can dance anywhere and you don't have to have a ton of space. Instead, you need to be adaptable and flexible to your surroundings. And most importantly, have a positive attitude to make the most of it. And that mental state and that obstacle sometimes we put in our mind, what people have been able to accomplish and do at home. I have one 30-year-old dancer who's doing leaps, jumps, and turns and advanced spins in her basement. Her name's Bree. She's amazing. And she's returning to dance. She danced since she was 18 years old. Dance gets the negative stereotype that ends at the age of 18. And we actually have positioned ourselves at Pods to be that company and that dance studio to welcome and invite dancers over the age of 18, reminding people that anyone, regardless of their age, dance background, dance skill, or body type, can put on their dancing shoes and enjoy the wonderful art of dance. And so we've encouraged and invited dancers of any age to come back and to dance with us. And Brie is one of them. She's 30. She's rocking it with fouettes and double turns and all these leaps and jumps in her basement. And I get to see her dog slowly every single time we have class. He always greets me. It's super cute. And then he leaves and goes back upstairs. It's awesome. The people that take dance lessons with you, they get something out of this, right? There's something that benefits their mind and their body. What are some of the things that they tell you that they really value about dancing? One of our values actually is being balanced. I have learned that with being a working professional. I was able to really do some amazing things. My work was featured actually in the Food Network magazine, acclaimed as Nebraska's Fall Pumpkin Celebration in its second year acclaimed by the governor and stuff. And yeah, that's all great. And I'm very humbled for having those accomplishments. But I learned as working professionals and working business owners, we all know that having a work-life balance can be exceptionally difficult. And I have really challenged my dancers as young as our five, six to eight-year-olds, all the way up through our adult learners to live a balanced lifestyle and balanced commitment and being a well-rounded individual and being diverse in your skills, being involved in different activities and commitments and knowing your cap of your commitments as well and knowing when that starts to stress you out and reevaluating it and just really being self-aware. We really invest in the holistic aspect of our dancers of mentally, emotionally, even I guess to some realms, spiritually, I guess you can say, but socially in addition to the physical benefits. So I'm one that's always going to say, When you put on your dancing shoes with pods, you are going to get a high quality professional dance education, but we are also going to encourage you to aspire to what are your personal goals? Not everyone we can attest is going to be a professional dancer someday or go to be a rocket or join a professional company. We've kind of lost that in the dance world. Let's get back to the roots of the recreational of it and the joy and the passion, just like we talked about the communication and the storytelling. and build up their confidence and self-esteem because we live in a society today that's just not supportive of it. Let's just say whatever phase of life you're coming and dancing with us, let's invest in you as a person and let's make the most of your goals and aspirations, even if it's not being a professional dancer. Hi, my name is Mark Orsag and I'm a 58-year-old rock climber. And I started training to try to get back some of the explosiveness that I've lost. I still compete at a fairly high level in my sport, despite my age. And it really has worked, I think, extremely well. I've noticed the difference most in a more explosive style of climbing that a lot of younger climbers enjoy called bouldering. And I've really made some progress there, things I've never been able to do before. I'm really excited to get outdoors and see how this translates into that environment this summer. Mark Orsag, I love talking about him. He's one of our 50 plus dancers. He is a rock climber. It is so cool. He came to us to do our adult stretch and strength class to help him with rock climbing. He's doing this because he wants to help himself physically be able to do this. And he recently was able to accomplish a certain climbing level that only he jokes around the youngsters can do. And he was not able to accomplish this personal rock climbing goal without our stretch and strength class, which is a dance class. It's fitness, it's cardio, it's conditioning. And it was so exciting for us to be a part of that journey to help him accomplish something that he personally wants to do as a dance teacher. And as a dance owner, I did my job of helping someone get where they want to go. If you want to go the full nine yards of dance, we will get you there. I love being able to invest in my dancers in that way. 
Are you a Gen Xer who would like to be part of a community designed especially for brilliant minds over 40? Ace Your Virtual Business is a business-focused group centered upon action, community, and effectiveness. Join us for exclusive offers and weekly live conversations that address your challenges and receive the encouragement, accountability, and support you need to succeed in the virtual business world. To get started now, visit aceyourvirtualbusiness.podia.com. Everybody has a reason and you need to know what your reason is. Yes, absolutely. Because then you are always fulfilled. You know that I'm dancing and this is what it's accomplishing for me. And what matters to one person might be different to somebody else. And I know some of the things, for example, that dance can teach you is things like hard work, teamwork, community, perseverance. These are skills that we can apply even in our businesses, in our personal lives. And dance is just another way to achieve that. Yes. One thing that I have learned early on in my life is that failure leads to success and you have to fail multiple times in order to be successful. I can't remember the quote, but I love sharing this quote with my dancers. Ever tried, ever failed. Try again, fail again, fail better. It is so true in our business life because we have a lot of hiccups and we really have to learn perseverance in business, especially in these COVID times. And I love telling my dancers that flexibility is a process, strength is a process. All of these exercises that you are learning is pushing you to get you to the next level. I am 54 years old and I have been dancing ballet with Kaylee for four years. Dancing with Kaylee has been a huge transformation of my life because the love for ballet has transformed my mind as well as my body. My body is strong and lean and flexible, and I can basically eat whatever I want and keep the weight off. My mind has transformed in such a way that I have found a true passion in life. And I have really gained an appreciation for hard work and dedication as well as perseverance. I am super excited to be part of her dance studio and take part in all of these amazing events she puts on. And all I can say is that her as my dance teacher is one of the best things that has happened in my life. Thank you so much, Kaylee. You are awesome. Andrea Holmes, she's one of our 50 plus dancers. I love bragging about her. She can do like fouettes and turns and leaps and footwork that are high school and college dancers. She can dance just along with them. It's amazing. One of the things that she always tells me is she's like, Kaylee, she said, after I master something, you're always giving me something harder. And she's like, you're always pushing me to get to the next level. She's like, you'll give me something that I'm really good at, but you always give me something else. And I tell her, I said, yeah, I said, because I see your potential. And I want to do my job to maximize it and to always keep you striving to the next goal, to be the better version of yourself. Resilience and perseverance is really, truly tested when you are at the bottom of the barrel. And when you are at that bottom point and you feel like there's no end in sight, and I've been really challenging our dancers through art, actually, and through our dances, that all of our pieces this year are about getting up again or sadness and sorrow, which at the bottom of the barrel, you experience that quite a ton. You feel like there's no end in sight. And some other things that we are doing is go the distance. It's hard that you can. And going back to that teamwork and supporting community, you need that support system and those around you to help build you up, especially when you're bottom of the barrel. You need sometimes someone to push your back a little bit to help you get up that hill. A lot of time perseverance is built when it feels that you're doing all the work, but there's no results. But that is the moment and the choice. Are you going to stop and quit, especially if you're learning something new? Or are you going to persevere until you get that breakthrough? And as a teacher, that's my personal goal is to keep that support and that encouragement and that accountability to keep pushing you until you have that breakthrough. Because sometimes it's a mental state as well of we're too old or we're not fit enough or dance is only for girls or I can't dance, I have two left feet. Well, we allow those mental blocks to stop us or we say we can't, I hate the word can't. I tell my dancers can't's not a word. (laughs) And I said, you got to keep pushing till you hit that breakthrough because perseverance is an uphill battle. And if you keep working hard enough, you will have that breakthrough where success is happening. But you have to fail. You have to persevere. You have to take on those challenges and be humble 
during it. And we love teaching that to our dancers. And we use our dance technique and terminology and exercises to teach them life skills that's going to help them be a better person at the end of the day, a better student, a better business owner, a better employee, a community member, and a better citizen in our wonderful nation. And teaching those life lessons so that you can apply that to whatever you aspire to and want to be. Oh, I'm so glad you brought up the things that stop people from doing this because I think that we get exposed to perfection, especially on television, right? You watch, for example, these young kids. I mean, seriously, like five years old playing the piano like they were Mozart. Oh, I know, right? (laughs) And then you say to yourself, how can I ever be that good? Which is where the can't comes from because you look at that and you say, well, they were just born that way. I mean, there's no way I could ever do that. And so I think that's what happens with dance is you see these shows as well, where they have these professionals performing in front of you. And even if they're amateurs, they are professionals compared to most of us. And so then you're saying, there's no way I'm not going to be able to achieve that. So again, it's going back to that. Why? Why are you doing it? Do you want to be a professional or perhaps you just want to dance because it feels good because you want to feel healthier. You want to move better. You want to learn all these life skills that you can apply in your professional and personal life. Those are the things you have to think about. It's the mindset. We stop ourselves because we compare ourselves to perfection. And maybe that's not what we're going after. Oh, absolutely. Especially I have found when asking individuals like, what are your personal goals? What are something you want to inspire to? It's funny. I am a very goal-oriented person. I remember countless times when I literally felt paralyzed. One day, I still remember in August, we're kind of at the height of COVID, school's about to start, everyone is just kind of topsy-turvy on what their decision is, what the safety protocols, if they are going to go with working with students, going to school, doing hybrid or online, like what the safest for your family or et cetera is. And I still remember sitting on my couch I was looking at our enrollment numbers and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was just terrified. Yeah. Like most people. I've never felt this way before. I literally was paralyzed. I really didn't feel like I could move. I remember just staring at my computer and I remember thinking, what are you going to do? I can either sit here or I can take one step. My face is really important to me. And I was reading a devotional and it was very applicable. It said, you know how you accomplish a big goal? One step at a time. And I still remember looking at my computer and I try to go through my list and my mind is just going. And I was like, what's one thing, one positive step I can do to help change my circumstance? And then I thought to myself, after I accomplished that task, okay, what's the next thing I can do? And I just kept eating away. And it's been so cool, Marissa. A couple of times I had to change, obviously, our 2020 company goals because of COVID. No one could predict that. And Updated that shortly after I had that mental breakthrough for myself personally. I think it was like October, September. I reevaluated my end of the year goals to start to get going for 2021. I checked those a couple of weeks ago and every single one of those goals that I thought were impossible to achieve highlighted in yellow, which means accomplished. And it was so rewarding just to see that. And I really want to challenge our business owners is that if you feel paralyzed, figure out one thing you can do today to change your circumstance. Even though it might seem minute at the moment, try it and stay consistent and do that daily until you accomplish what's going on. And we really challenge our dancers as well. If they have a goal or a dream, even if it's not to go professional, I love working with my dancers who take all of our recreational classes or community performance classes helping them get over those mental or physical blocks. We're talking about a lot of mental right now, but let's talk physical. It's a really great low impact way of fitness outlet. In addition to it also helps, I have heard and found personally increases your cardiovascular health, helps you with weight loss and weight management and helps you to stay active. We all need accountability partners in our life. I think we've all experienced that. I love asking my dancers, like, what's your personal goals? What's your personal health goals? What is something you want to learn in my class? I just had a new dancer in our Colorado branch join us in our adult beginner ballet at our new Highlands Ranch studio. She's a figure skater. Her name's Laura. And she wants to be able to improve her technique to make her better at ice skating. I was like, yeah, come on over. And I'm going to give you all the dance knowledge that I know to help you be a better figure skater. For our 50 plus adults, I have learned as well that dance actually increases bone health and helps reduce the risk of osteoporosis. That's pretty awesome, especially if you know that's in your possible family history. 
a lot of times I feel like in life, we get so in the hustle and stuff that we wonder, well, why am I doing what I'm doing? I think every business owner has that every once in a while, especially when you're at the bottom of the barrel and you're just persevering and just working and working, but not feeling like you're getting results. It's always wonderful. I feel that you get those nuggets to tell you to keep on going. Before I officially made pods as a business, I got a letter from a dancer. She's like, I have a lot of anxiety and I have to deal with a lot of mental health stuff. And she said, your dance project at Pods has actually helped me overcome my anxiety. Things that you would never have even considered, they're telling you it has impacted them. And if you had just stared at your computer and said, woe is me, things aren't going well, and now I'm doomed because... I have to have live dancing and that's the only way to go and there's nothing else I can do. It's not just about you. You are dropping the ball on the people that count on you because all of the people that are part of your community would have suffered immensely if you didn't find a way to still help them. Because with us being trapped at home now, it's even harder. People are feeling disconnected from the world and you are bringing them together. So it really was more than just what can I do to keep my business going, but more so what can I do to continue to help the people that are counting on me? Absolutely, Marissa. And we were actually doing online dance classes virtually in 2019 and even choreography into 2018. In the fall of 2019, I had this inkling like, you need to go virtual. And I could not shake it. And I'm not sure why, but I'm grateful to this day that I did. And we had all the technology set up and we were already teaching classes to dancers in New York City who were taking classes with us on a weekly basis prior to COVID hitting. You're saying the table was set. It was already there. And now you could just utilize it to a level that you didn't expect because you were kind of backed up against the wall at this point. Absolutely. And it was amazing. I had my studio manager, Kiri Kristan, and one of my best friends, and we joke around and call Sarah Bornia my unofficial personal assistant. (laughs) I still remember we were sitting around Sarah's kitchen table, literally transitioning pods to all virtual the week before the shutdown. And driving home, I was thinking to myself, what can I do to be proactive. And I still remember my husband was playing video games. I was on the couch. It was 4 a.m. And I literally woke up and I was like, I'm doing social media free virtual classes. I was on Canva creating my graphics and et cetera. And I was like, I'm going to do free classes three days a week. And I did my first class that afternoon, a salsa fever class. And I had over a thousand people attend that first class. And it was amazing. It was so cool. I kept watching the analytics. There's a really amazing book and I can't remember the author, but the gentleman wrote a book like how to succeed in the arts. And it was for entrepreneurs in the arts world. And I read that book and took a ton of notes the first two weeks and took the approach of marketing more during recession, cutting back potential payroll, paying yourself less, putting in the extra mile and being consistent and top of mind for all your customers. And so I took that advice and applied it to my dance companies and my choreography businesses. And now you're able to give them what they needed without saying, I'm sorry, but I can't help you now. And that's really where all of us businesses need to switch gears. Why not offer different options? When things start to open up again and you can go live, I'm sure you're still going to go live, but now you have the option to offer the virtual piece if they want it. And some people can't even go live. Maybe they can't travel. Maybe there's certain things they can't do. So now you're able to reach even more people. So sometimes these disadvantages can turn into very positive outcomes. You think the exact same way I do. I thought the same thing. I thought to myself, you know, I can either sit here and be reactive to my circumstances, or I can take one step today to be proactive to change my circumstances. The things that I took away is that every single time I wanted to quit and not continue this class because I thought I was at the bottom of the bear. I'm like, I'm not getting any results right now. I'm not getting any nuggets. Didn't feel like business, let's just say. I would have someone reach out to me. I had a gentleman in the Philippines reach out to me and say, my daughter's taking your kids' creative movement classes every Monday. Still to this day, I'm having people across Nebraska who I worked with through the chamber or at Doan, through pods or choreography gigs or extended family members were like, my kid took your dance class every single Monday movement. Or I had a lady who was in her 60s in Atlanta, Georgia, contact me and say, pods is the only thing that is keeping me moving during COVID. And I was just humbled because my whole purpose is to use my talents and my skills during COVID. I've always wanted to dance. 
I'm 38 years old. It's really hard to find a convenient in-person beginning dance class for adults. So it was kind of like a dream come true to find Kaylee in pods. I never imagined I could be successful as a dancer, but Kaylee is so open and enthusiastic, it's really easy to learn from her. She takes time to check in with me, answers all my questions, and I feel like I've really grown as a dancer in this last year. I take beginning ballet and beginning tap online, and I really love every minute of it. It's hard to explain how something that sounds so simple, a live online dance class, can be so life-changing. Because the class is live, it's tailored to the needs of the dancers. And I know that I'm missed if I have to miss a class. And Kaylee always makes sure that I have the recording so I can practice on my own. Kaylee is so awesome. (laughs) She is dedicated to the success of each dancer. I look forward to my classes each week. And I really never expected to be here. But thanks to Kaylee, I've learned to be confident on the dance floor. Shauna actually... I just adore her and her family. She is a working mom and she is taking classes with us once a week, but she's taking two classes on her own. In addition to our litter ones, taking all of our online classes, Shauna is a music director and pianist, and she actually decided to take our musical theater dance program to help her be a stronger musical theater director and help herself personally with being a working adult and a working professional be stronger at her musical theater auditions, and be a stronger dance candidate. She shared that in musical and choreography rehearsals, being able to know dance skills, it's going to help her do her job better. And so stories like this is why I love doing what we do at Pods, to help them to achieve it and using dance as the vessel to do it. All of us want to make a difference. I think that's why we do what we do. We're passionate about doing things because we all have the reason what gets us going, what keeps us motivated. And it's usually helping other people in some capacity, being of value. And so when you found that and you realized that, hey, I can switch things around and still be able to do the things that, you know, make me excited and make me feel like I'm making a difference in the world. That's what matters. You out there listening, you are probably thinking the same thing. You're probably frustrated and wondering, I feel like I'm spinning my wheels all the time and nothing's happening. But that perseverance and believing that you can help people is really what matters. So think about how you can continue to make that difference. Yes, absolutely. And the cool thing too, I know you're alluding to this too, Marissa, I call them learning opportunities. And I would say COVID for us business owners was a huge learning opportunity. And we can look at it negatively. Or we can look at it like, okay, what can I do to make myself, my business better to create more value for my customers? And it was so exciting. We were the first studio in the state of Nebraska to have a live virtual dance program prior to COVID-19. We now have a full service online dance studio that we see complete different dancers from three years old to 50 plus on a weekly basis who are taking classes with us in their basement. And some of them, they're higher risk. So they have decided online's a better preference for them. And it's been awesome. We have been able to expand our outreach exponentially. And then in addition to being in Colorado, we're working in Sterling Ranch community and also in the Highlands Ranch community. We have a physical branch inside Honor Yoga. And for our Sterling Ranch families, it's a little bit far of a commute. Some of them have higher risk relatives. I've been working with Kate, who's their community programmer and director. I said, how about I come to you instead? Because people are still kind of fearful in regards to the circumstances. We have now created not one, not two, but four separate different branches of pods because of thinking outside the box and doing full on virtual and going to the people instead of the people coming to me and changing our mindset of how we do business. Most of us have been working and focusing on a very small space. Our worlds are usually five miles between our business and the people that we serve. We've had to find ways to reach out. And now we can offer what we do anywhere in the world. It's just opened up so many doors. I know. I agree entirely. I want Pods to be a Midwestern brand. And COVID has allowed me to propel exponentially that goal and vision. I actually kind of revolutionized how you do choreography and musical theater. I can be at five places in one day. For example, I'm doing a kid's palms dance routine in a school outside of San Diego, California, all while teaching in Colorado at the same time and doing lessons that evening. 
And then later at night, zooming in with my Creed High School musical theater students to work on your good man, Charlie Brown, and do choreography review. It is amazing what embracing technology and embracing the circumstances, I can be in five places in one day without leaving the comfort of my own home. Exactly. Now you're able to reach more people than you would have ever imagined and make a difference for them as well. So I think that's incredible, Kaylee. Could you share with the listeners exactly what types of dance you offer, how they participate in your programs, and learn more about pods? If you want to learn more about Pods Dance Company or our traveling professional choreography business, Kaylee Show and Cole Dance and Choreography, you are welcome to learn more about us and reach out to us at www.podsdancecompany.com. Reach out to us at our business phone number at 308-765-1137. Our email, podsdanceco at gmail.com, or stop by or reach out to us at any of our four branches in Crete, Nebraska, Highlands Ranch, Colorado, Sterling Ranch, and our traveling dance studio, or learn more about our online dance programming. As our thank you for listening to our podcast today, the first 10 individuals to reach out to pods to share with us your personal goals and aspirations that you want to accomplish, or if you want to take class with us, we would love that. And you'll receive a complimentary online dance class of your choice to try out a dance or fitness class on pods. One last charge as well for you. Find 15 minutes, 30 minutes of your time with zero distractions and personally look and think about your business goals and some of your personal aspirations that you want to achieve and really just take time for yourself, eliminate distractions and just really write down everything that you want to accomplish. And once you do that, look at your list and see one action step that you can take to accomplish that goal. I hope my stories and podcasts helped inspire you today to remember that you can do whatever is in front of you and you can accomplish all your goals and aspirations just one step at a time. People are still feeling like they can't get out as often and there's so many restrictions that are out there for them and having the opportunity to participate in a community to learn a new skill and to develop their minds and bodies using dance. I think it's such a wonderful thing that you're doing, Kaylee. Thank you for sharing this with us. Thanks so much for hosting me, Marissa. That's a wrap for this episode of Live Blissed Out. Thanks for listening. And thanks to Kaylee Shadwinkle for joining us on the show. If you have a question or comment for a future episode, all you have to do is go to speakpipe.com forward slash L-B-O-V-M or click the link in the show notes to leave a brief audio message. If you find value in our show, please visit liveblissedout.com to reach out, subscribe, and share on social media. This show is made possible through listeners like you. Thank you. So long for now, and remember to keep moving forward.